What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. Thanks for making it out. Really do appreciate it. Thanks so much again. We always have a lot of fun out here. And today's going to be a, a pretty interesting one. We got kind of a heady topic. We're going to talk about learning through doing and how failure is a part of learning. And we're going to tie it into ham radio, of course. But hopefully, this is going to be a good discussion that is something that applies to the rest of your life, maybe. Enjoy the memes as we kick things off. How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Welcome back to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Uh, big day, big week. I hope everybody's having fun out there and, and you're ready for the weekend. You're going to have fun yourself. Uh, I hit 200,000 subscribers, which is uh, pretty pretty wild. Uh, yeah, thank you, to everybody. I, I really do appreciate it. it. It's an honor that you guys subscribe to the channel, and it, it means a lot that you come back and watch, particularly like this week right now and doing the show so thanks again i appreciate that big thank you to everybody uh let's see so ham radio ham tactical.com is where the merch is so if you're interested in like a shirt you want to help support the channel we got a lot of stuff uh hopefully fun designs that you find interesting leah is working on the design that we'll have for huntsville the ham fest so if you're going to huntsville you may want to wear one of these uh cool shirts whatever she comes up with will be something fun uh, but until then it is koozie season we got so many people that asked for koozies leah made three different options so if you're still interested in uh, getting a koozie, the time is now since we are uh, deep into koozie, koozie territory. Is it koozie weather? Is that what we would call it? I think so, probably. All right, so what are we talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about learning through doing. And sometimes that can be mm, a bit of a dichotomy with... with um, with amateur radio, how we do things. Sometimes we're, we get in this mindset of like, oh, I've got to learn, I've got to learn, I've got to learn before I ever put solder to board or uh, hand to mic or, you know, whatever it is that you're you're working with, your HTs or whatever. So I've got Dom here and we're going to have a lot of fun. I'll bring him on in a minute. I did want to mention too, uh, lots, of, lots of really great comments on the video that I did on the Cuban I, we called it the Cuban jamming crisis, but all of you have seen it on 40 meters. Massive amounts of interference that looks like it's intentional interference. I stopped it right there uh, on that video I posted. And yeah, it's it's literally transmissions out of Cuba. I, I know that there's many a political stance on this, and I sure have my opinions on what's going on. But I just want to make it very clear that I believe, I personally believe, using the, the direction finding techniques that we did here, that um, the signals are coming from Cuba so do that do what you will with that information that's uh, really shouldn't be a political thing that just should just be using sensors and technologies to actually say yes this is where it's coming from it shouldn't be political at least I, I I don't believe it should anyway thanks everybody for the comments on that it's been amazing I uh, really do appreciate the support Paul Garber with the uh with the super chat hey man thank you so much i really appreciate it he says congrats on 200,000 followers well deserved my friend thank you so much paul i appreciate it I, and i appreciate all the support that you've given in the past it really means a lot let's uh let's go ahead and throw it over to dom i've got a guest here today dom helped me work out some slides and we're going to have a little talk he's i know got, for a fact them radio <laughs> waves is harmful and i do as well on this topic so again hey dom thanks for thanks for coming out tonight how are you doing how's the weather out there in ohio Pretty good. It's uh, it's definitely muggy out here. Got about five inches of rain this week. Five inches of rain. I I know that that creates humidity, but boy, I I think uh, California needs a little bit of that. So, uh, I'm I'm so, I'm sort of jealous, but I know humidity comes along with that with that fact. Uh, I forgot one thing. I got to do. Uh, I I did have a bottle of prosecco here for um. For the two hundred thousand, I, I just happened to throw this in the fridge. I realized that I hit it before the stream, and I didn't think that was going to happen. So I, I didn't have proper champagne. So we're going to have a prosecco today. That's what I'll be drinking. And this is a Rufino prosecco, which is always good stuff. So let's launch it. There we go. There we nice. go. Hopefully that hit a radio. We'll see. Uh, what's going on, Don? What are you doing this week or weekend? Not too much. Uh... 
I haven't been able to play radio a whole lot, but um, just I guess kind of relaxing and enjoying the weather when it's not raining. Yeah, I imagine. I mean, is it like a hot rain when it happens? Does it come down all hot? Uh, yesterday it was. It came down real strong, real quick. It's like getting we hit were, with bath water. <laughs> yeah, we were heading oh. over to a, a local bar, and it was just downpouring. Thankfully, we didn't get caught in it, but we had to sit in our cars for like gosh 30 minutes probably wait for the rain to pass it was not fun so even when it rains in california it's not very hard like i just get out and walk to where i'm going in middle of winter i don't care you just you just get out and go it's you dry off real fast so is it like aggressive rain that you get in ohio <laughs> where you don't aggressive. want to get out of the car okay yeah. okay i got it i got it that's crazy to me Oh, man. I, I, I don't even know what that looks like. I don't know that I've been in a place where it has aggressive rain, but I, I'm familiar it's with bad. the concept. I've seen it. So, Dom, what are we talking about today? You, you, you messaged me a little while ago, and we were having a chat, and, and this idea came up. And I'll let you kind of kind of talk to it a little bit before we pull the slides up. Yeah, so it's – I don't know exactly how to describe it. Like learning by doing kind of hands-on stuff. Um like, for example, like those of you who, like kind of memorize some of the questions to like get your license, which not talking on at all, yeah, how no. to get your license, how we, how we need to get it. Um, I'm a big proponent of it, though, because it lets you get on the air and operate and then use your like get hands on with like any equipment that you have. Like the other day, I didn't know how to tune up. A, I guess not the other day, but a few weeks ago, I didn't know how to tune up an amp mm -hmm. and I've been an extra for over a year now mm -hmm. so i called uh connor w4 ipc about how to tune it he taught me and i know how to do it now good so yeah that's an interesting point and, and I, I didn't really think about that when we were going through the slides we'll definitely have to I talk know to for it fact, them radio well, waves hey, is thank harmful. you christiana for the uh for the super chat congrats on 200k josh from K, uh, n6 kv clouder in uh ohio is that ohio was that right oh no oregon thank you very much appreciate that christiana i'm gonna mute the uh the audio there for the uh clips i love the clips that play when when we get a super chat but since we're having a discussion i don't want to interrupt uh, our banter so yeah you get you get your license i think you and i are the same mindset that well i i would love it if everybody knew every inside and out of the technician manual general extra manual i realize that that's kind of not possible Right. I, I don't know of Especially a human. Especially for extra. Yeah. I don't know of a, of a more robot than man human that exists that, that could do that uh, and then, you know, hold off not doing anything with radio and then like, OK, now I'm ready. I know everything and now it's yep. time. So there's always some kind of balance of knowledge versus kind of the mental tool set to be able to figure out the solution to your problem. Right. I, I've always mm -hmm. felt that way. Like it, it's not necessarily what you know at that moment. It's do you have the mental tools available to find the solution or at least find the right direction to find, to get the solution? Exactly. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that concept. Um, so, yeah, everybody that, that's thinking about getting their license or they're working on getting your license, uh, I've always said once you start getting 75% in the practice tests, go take the tests. Go get it. There is plenty of time to learn. I think it was K Booty. Um, or many people have said, if you it, when you get your license, it's it's really a license to learn. You're just passing the first step onto what's largely going to be what we're going to talk about, which is now that you've got it, what do you do with it? Or getting that that mental tool set in place that allows you to work through the problems that you're going to find. Right? What, what would right. you say? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna. There's a term that I'm going to use later when we get to the slides. I'm going to save. Okay. Because I, we, we'll wait. We don't, we don't have to tell. We, I, yeah. I think I know where you're going with it, but yeah. yeah. If any of you watch De Destin from Smarter Every Day, you know exactly what I'm going to talk about. But um, yeah, just I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save it. Yeah, good. Now, and that's uh, for for some. Just by mentioning the name, probably a lot of people know where we're going with that. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm also of the opinion that that seems to be the the best way to go about learning and 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 growth in anything um i'm gonna i'm gonna bring up multiple things that are kind of outside of uh ham radio as far as like my failures things i failed on and and my processes of working myself through it um so yeah somebody asked gordon farmers forge asked josh is your extra like our full license uh, so, guard, uh, Gordon, it, it depends on where you're from. I've, uh, if you, I think full applies in 
where does full where's full from is that uk England? and australia or is that canada i'm not sure um it's similar very similar but the main difference that i would say between Canada, UK, and the United States, and, and Australia, is UK and Australia, when you get your license, you get like access to all the bands, including HF. Your restriction is based off of power output. In the United States, when you get your technician license, you get a much smaller access to bands, but you generally have very wide access to power if you wanted to run an amp or, or whatever. So that, that's a similar, similar but different in some ways. But when you get to extra and, and in comparison to full, your power output and band accesses are pretty much the same, except that Americans can go up to 1,500 watts output. And in UK, I believe your max is 400. And then you have to apply for an experiment mental license or something like that does that sound familiar uh, dom do you remember that at all i th i remember the power output i don't remember the exact i think in australia you have to apply to get like the full power out yeah i don't know about the uk I, top I of think my head. That, yeah I, I did a video with um dx commander and uh, that's oh. available we did a we did kind of a comparison between the american license and the uk license and that was the big thing, is that the power output capability of the UK was less than the Americans. But they were way more willing to give you like a, a license, a temporary license to allow you to, to play with more power, which is, which is fun. So, yeah. Anyway, hope that answers the question. Racer X, hey, thank you so much for the, uh, the super chat. I really do appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Very good. All right, Dom. Well, let's why don't we why don't we pull up the slides here and we'll let you kick things off a little bit because we're gonna have a little bit of a, a banter back and forth. So here we go. Hopefully, there it is. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I need to start here. So I guess like learning on the job, um, as the title implies, um, is the kind of what we're talking about. It's just like getting out there, getting what you need to what you need to know before like you go and do it so like getting your license and getting ready to mm -hmm. go and play with all the fun toys of ham radio and like another analogy is like sometimes we're like going to school and learning all your things for you go out and apply it in the real world i I, I have a i have a fun anecdote on this so if you don't mind mentioning it dom you're 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 going to college soon and what what did you say your your degree was going to be in or what right. you're aiming Computer science, and I don't remember what my emphasis right now. But yeah, computer science. So I, uh, I, I graduated with a computer, computer information systems, but uh, ma mainly was on programming. I spent a lot of time doing C and C plus uh, plus, a lot of SQL stuff, backend stuff. I went to work, and went, this was when I was at Boeing. First day, they're like, "What, what do you, what do you feel comfortable with?" And I said, "C plus plus," and they said great you're going to be doing java 100 percent of the time <laughs> so it, again it's it's toolkit stuff right it's mental toolkit stuff like you you're um you're gonna find yourself in situations where you feel comfortable in in one aspect of something and um you're gonna quickly realize that when you go to apply it, it it's not going to line up with what real world expectations are but hopefully in the process of of learning and and you can kind of draw upon areas that you're comfortable with right so in my case right. c++ development is still object oriented so i was able to leverage what i knew in that area with java though i, I picked up things like a much heavier instance or usage of dot operators and a, kind of a better API class structure and stuff like that. So I, I enjoyed uh, actually developing on Java once I got comfortable with it. But uh, yeah, anyway, okay. That's just my anecdote, so we can keep going. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're good. Um, yeah. So this is kind of the, the big thing I was talking about with Smart Every Day. So knowledge versus understanding. So like when you think of knowledge, you like, you're getting taught at, you're kind of learning. So it's what's learned or understood or aware of, but it's not the full thing of like what's understood or aware of because to understand you have to have knowledge. Mm -hmm. To understand you have to like achieve the full grasp of whatever your knowledge is of that. So Or, or a decent grasp, so, something yeah. more than textbook, I would argue in a lot of cases, right? right? Yeah. So like you'd have to, I had a good, good analogy and i don't remember it well i like um, you said taught at did you yeah. say taught at i, taught I really at. like that that that's 
yeah, oftentimes that's that's more often than what my experience has been, particularly in in high school and college. You get you get taught at, and it's only if you have a spark of interest and passion that you're like, oh, I'm going to go learn this now. You know what I mean? That's and without getting too high up on my soapbox about public education, <laughs> that's kind of what it is. Um, and unless you have a really good teacher, they teach you uh, this is the way you do it, this is how you do it, and they never teach you how to apply it. Yep. In which that's kind of understanding is applying what you know right so to quote destined from smart every day knowledge is not understanding is not the same so what i mean break that down a little bit knowledge is not understanding so you can well i think you do in the slides uh, slides a little bit but i think people yeah. understand what knowledge is but what is understanding in, in your in your mind um I'm trying to think of how to put an example because i i like talking with examples because i think it's easier to wrap your head around so like not so to kind of back up like knowledge is like all the information you read it out of like the text or the uh, tech ham exam book or something mm -hmm. let's even say general and they teach you how to make antennas mm -hmm. which we have more slides on that too but like yes. understanding is like taking that information from that book that you're learning and then actually solving a problem with it so then you actually understand how this works mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of what to describe without saying understand but you are aware of how the system you're creating works. Yeah, I, I've always a, kind of likened it to you obviously understand how something works. So if, if you pop the hood on a an old muscle car, I pretty much know how everything works in that. I had a 67 Mustang. It doesn't have to be a Mustang for me to go, ah, oh, yes, that's that. I understand how that works. But then my knowledge of how that engine worked, because that was the first car I had to spend a lot of time wrenching on it, then I turned that around to, I kind of get the idea how a lot of other things work. It's the minutia of like, oh, you know, what's the compression of this particular engine? Or where should I set the rotor points to? On Hey, how, hey kids, who knows what a rotor point is? <laughs> Do you know what a rotor point is, Dom? That's where you have to turn on the belt, don't you? You have to turn on the belt. Well, what what, like, would, what would what device is that most related to? Uh, if you were to if you had to adjust the points, what would you be adjusting the points on? I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but no, you're fine. I, I have I to ask you people this question. I probably should know it, and this is this really ties into the whole thing of knowledge versus understanding. Like, yeah. you can tell me what it is until I do it. Um, <laughs> It, it, the, the points are uh, they're, they're these little contact points that are on uh, your distributor and you use it oh, for, okay. for setting the timing and you could advance or retard the timing of an engine uh, in the distributor cap from doing that which is hilarious because one of the first things you do if you want like a faster older muscle car is you get those points out of there and you replace it with an electronic ignition system right <laughs> so yeah anyway all right let, let's go show us how young I am no I, I'm, I'm sorry to do it too but I had oh, to fine. ask I had to ask all right yeah, so example, um, and this is going to be the next slide too. So like DMR for an example. So like I could tell you. Do you want me to put the slide so you can, you can talk yeah, directly sure. to it? Yeah. So like very high level thing here. I'm not going to tell you how to do DMR, but like I can tell you in the DMR software that you're programming your radio, I could explain where you need to put the frequencies for each channel, what color code and time slot you need for it, all the talk groups. Um, and all the other minutia for it. Mm -hmm. And like, you can look at that and you can be like, yep, I, I know, I know how to do it. I, yep. I, I, under, like, I, you could print I, that out and you go, I have the knowledge. I'm holding yes, I, the knowledge, right? I have the thing that I know how to do it now. Right. I could so go then, do DMR. So then you, you print it out, you take it, or you have the YouTube video up <laughs> that you watched it. Yeah. And then you go down to sit at the DMR programming software that you have. Mm -hmm. And you open it up, and you just see this huge screen. If you right. want to go to the next, and if you want to go to the next slide, yep. You have the knowledge, but do you understand how to do it? Right. Uh, likely no. And uh, depending on which brand of DMR radio you picked up, their softwares are all totally different. <laughs> so you get snacked, but you get smacked around a little bit by that too. So yeah, okay. Yep. This, so that's a good point. Do you have another example of something like that in ham radio where you can have the knowledge, but like not necessarily have the the understanding so, um so i think the next slide's about dipoles right yeah let's okay let me, we, hold on sorry about that i clicked i was trying mouse. to think of something else besides oh, oh I guess yeah not. so it's the uh the orange slide okay sorry i don't have that up in front of me here mm. um so yeah we're gonna talk about dipoles here in a second but like um this is why hands-on is important because uh 
again to quote destin uh paper physics can only get you so far like yeah. you can do all the calculations um to like it's gonna jump ahead a little like if you're building a dipole you can make all the calculations that you need to it needs to be this long usually this high off the ground and this much coax and you should be perfect to go mm -hmm. that being said that doesn't always correlate when you go out in front of your house and you realize that you have a uh, sheet metal siding or aluminum uh, barrier or yeah. uh, vapor barriers and too much salt in your ground or something salt water in your ground oh good you hit that i was definitely going to hit that point your yeah. ground your ground consistency will change things wildly yeah i've learned that the hard way unfortunately yeah seriously but um I have an example of this, and I'm going to refer back to this one a lot. The water heater. Have you ever replaced a water heater? I have not. Have you ever worked on a water heater, though? Not really. They're actually very simple devices. They're, they're so simple, in fact, that like the fact that most people don't actually do the maintenance work on their water heater is really, really interesting to me. Something that... Um, so you, you could get really good. You could get all the information you need. Like, okay, you're going to have a, an anode that does this temperature thing, and that temperature gauge is going to tell the burner whether or not it can turn on. And it's that temperature gauge is, is heated, up, it's heated up by the pilot light. And it's just sitting there. It's a very simple device. And that's connected to the gas um, meter or, you know, the gas control. And that thing goes out. It goes out, right? It's just a very simple little piece of wire that connects to this anode that connects to the gas adapter. But every one or lots of different water heater companies will have them in different locations, or they'll be routed differently, or they'll have a pilot point that's different. So you could go, say, look at a YouTube video that says, how do I replace the anode, or my uh, my burner won't turn on for my, my pilot, my, uh, my water heater. And it will inevitably show you like a a Kenmore water heater or something but you have insert different brand and so you you kind of have an adjacent understanding but it, you haven't applied it yet to your own and your model that you're applying this knowledge to that you received is a different model right so you you learned from a YouTube video on a Kenmore but you've got whatever some other brand right, right? I, I, whirlpool i don't know do whirlpools make uh, hot water heaters i think they do yeah not uh, a high plant here in town but Li liberty cave you you mentioned sacrificial metals i haven't even got to that point yet oh boy that's going to be a thing later the sacrificial rod who knows what that is post it in the comments if you know uh so that happens a lot in ham radio particularly ham radio youtube videos is i will show you a video and i will title it how to use a Raspberry Pi with your ham radio. And because I, I demonstrated it on like a KX2 or a, a 705, I'll get a ton of comments back from people that say, well, I have uh, an 817 or I have a 7300 or I have a this, I have a that. So I, I've got them in the wheelhouse of knowledge or, or yeah, understanding. No, knowledge. <laughs> I've got to make sure I get the two right. Uh, of, of knowledge. But to take it that last mile home that that's the part that that people start falling off on because they haven't gotten the understanding of their radio to localize it to their solution right does that make sense right. yeah, yeah. i've found that yeah so all right let's we'll it we'll go to the next one there yeah so like i said i kind of jumped the gun i got dipoles a no little no bit this, here. Is, this is too but, good um, i think we're gonna hit a lot of this yeah so um like knowing how is easy like it's just two wire like you have your coax going up and you have just two wires going that way that's it it's that uh, simple it's, yep it's just that's all you need just go that's, do it no. just go do it but uh uh like like the slide says practice in practices isn't so easy um because you could be uh like ideal dipole is up what quarter wavelength and or at least quarter wavelength and yeah uh, ideal ground conditions um, how many people have a proper quarter wavelength above the ground dipole exactly uh, th there is very few hams that actually have a perfectly perpendicular to ground dipole up one quarter wavelength it's very rare and then to add on to that, like you can see the soda beams antenna is a kind of compromise because it's an inverted v so that's right that's just gonna that's gonna affect your radiation pattern your efficacy of it yep uh, so then like i said earlier you have your ground effects with how much mineral how many minerals you have in your soil you're kind of getting down the nitty gritty about antenna theory here but your ground can play a huge role in it uh and 
like I said, like nearby buildings can also affect your propagation. Mm-hmm. How much tuning you need to do to it, you have to narrow it in to really get uh, the maximum efficiency out of it. So, like you have the knowledge of how to do all this, but until you get out to the real world to tune your antenna and know how, say, like a dipole works, mm-hmm. you're not going to understand how. Hours you're not going to understand how a dipole works until you mess around and tune and perfect your dipole. If that makes sense. No, it, it does. And and in fact, I'll I'll, I'll add the uh, salty ham comment of a lot of hams will tell you like don't necessarily use an antenna analyzer. I've heard this before, believe it or not. I, I, antenna analyzers are fantastic tools. If you're building your first dipole. Sometimes actually going through the pain of the dozen or so trips back and forth from your radio to the antenna that you do back and forth, back and forth. Look at the SWR. Am I using AM? I am using AM. I key up. That puts out a constant carrier or, a, you know, the, the inevitable whistling on single sideband that occurs. And looking at the SWR meter and then walking back out to your antenna and then adjusting the legs for fine tuning, going back to your radio. Because what am I saying? So I'm saying, you, you, let's say you build a 20 meter dipole, which is pretty much the one that you're showing that, that I'm showing in the picture there. I have my radio set to, let's call it 14.250. So I want to be towards the single sideband side. When I key up, my SWR goes to like three to one. Wow, okay, what's going on? Well, so I would go back out to the antenna and I would lengthen the legs of the antenna, right? Both sides, if I'm building my own dipole. Go back to my radio, Uh uh-oh, now it's 3.5 to one. Come back out, go back out to the antenna. Now I'm gonna shorten it, see what happens, see if anything changes. And sure enough, oh hey, it starts to go down. But I could have been wrong. It could have been needing more wire, right? I, I, I could have been going the wrong direction, kind of. Actually, no, no, it has to be shorter because I said three and then 3.5. So there, there's a whole um, and, if, and if you replace that knowledge um, or understanding with going straight to the antenna analyzer, you're you're shortcutting it a bit. And that's really helpful for the people that already know how to do it. But if you haven't gone through the somewhat bashing your head against the wall, right, falling down the tree of understanding and hitting your head on every branch, you're not going to necessarily know all those details of, of building a dipole, for instance. But uh, I, I, I appreciate the point. I, I really do like the, the example of the dipole. Because that's everybody's first antenna, right? Or yeah. generally, generally. And shout out to all the super antenna users out there that take 80 trips to tune their antenna. <laughs> Myself included. Uh, I've done that with a Wolf River. Yep, I've definitely done that with a Wolf River. In fact, I'll, I'll go so far as to just pick the radio up and, and get closer to the antenna yeah. to, to, to tune it. So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, I'll probably pull up a link later. Super Antenna uses a loaded coil. So it's a coil of wire that has a collar and you adjust the collar vertically or, or lengthen or shorten the antenna. You're, you're electrically lengthening it or shorting it. And when you key up, your SWR will like change significantly like one or two clicks will change things a lot to the point that when you get it in the wheelhouse as we call it when you get close in you start actually just rotating the collar to fine tune yeah. it to, to, you get right to the sweet spot so yeah i know exactly what you're talking about yeah definitely and uh i i feel bad i, I don't want to say i'm ripping him off here but i just got a <laughs> lot of my ideas from him here so like there's a I, I was watching a lot of his videos, but there's a moment that it just clicks when you're for right. any one thing they're doing. This moment it clicks. So like the dipole um, analogy is just like as you're doing, like as you're trimming it, as you're making all these trips and under like yes. getting to understand yes all the effects that like say your ground, your buildings, everything else affect your antenna. There's a moment that it just clicks in your brain that oh hey this is how this works and oh hey this is what this does and it just and you can see when people are doing this that it just clicks in their mind yeah so like for example like tuning on a uh, trying to find a small example they're all giant kilowatt tuners but on a manual <laughs> tuner um like, like a qrp with, tuner yeah or or just you keep talking i'm, I'm sure i've got uh, one around here <laughs> yeah i don't have is this one lighting up no, I know we're all not. we're all going off off scene to like reach for reach for equipment right now. Oh, I've got one. I've got one oh. in eye shot. Do you want me to grab it? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, okay. Keep talking. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, as you just like, uh, I'm mean, sure everyone knows this, but he's gonna, I grab a visual, but like, as you tune the knobs and just like select the uh, banks of the resistors or capacitors, you can just see people, like, you just see them light up as they understand, like, oh, hey, turning this this way and making them act together. Um, yeah, yes. so like the inductance banks, as you change those, you people realize oh hey turning it this way makes it go down and the noise level you... you're talking see that's the that is the hidden that's the hidden knowledge right is that you you turn this for the noise the maximum noise right yep. now have you ever used one of these where there's no noise what a pain in the butt it is to tune <laughs> it's even more fun trying to tune up with a amp on that's how i was thinking about this is tune up with an amp here yeah but yeah, like same thing like even with an amp like as people are turning those knobs like they understand like oh we have to just get the needle down to the lowest point or lowest swr okay great but as they're sitting there they realize the effects the inductance and capacitance have on the knobs so like they they understand how it works and you just see it light up in them that they get it yeah for sure it's it's always uh the and again actually that's kind of a that's also a really good example is the manual antenna tuner right how many radios do we have now that have an automatic antenna tuner we're totally like i just hit that button and then i start transmitting and we don't really understand or, or have a concept of what an antenna match system is doing depending on you know the makeup of your tuner but you pull out a, a manual tuner like that and you're like okay now i need you to go through all the inductance spots on that uh on those taps there and find the one that has the most noise and you're like well why do we want the most noise oh well, because that's where the path of you know the, the match to the antenna is best you're getting the most received signal in and you can start having this whole dialogue of like well why am i doing this right all of this stuff is fascinating when you start doing it on the physical level Mm. <laughs> my ball wilson with the super chat says i need this would dom be willing to be an elmer for hire set up icom yesu anytone and sdr play rigs all on hrd how to contact him uh through our discord and yes he dom actually go ahead yeah uh, can you That's if you're willing to talk about this would you would yeah, you say sure. what you do on the back end of the ham radio crash course for me yeah so my side hustle is um actually like you said an elmer for hire um at 25 bucks an hour and it's one-to-one -one, uh or one-on-one -on -one, uh either zoom however you want to communicate minus phone calls for the most because that's just kind of hard to get on a pc because i like sitting down and just doing that that way but anyway i i do want to i do want to say everybody who's contacted me and they're asking me to like do one-on-one -on -one sessions which uh i would love to i would i i totally would love to do this but I work, all right? I got a family, I work, I make the videos, I do all that stuff. I put, throw everybody over to Dom, literally. I'm like, hey, Dom, I got I got somebody who, who, who needs help. You wanna help them? And I'll pass them on, and uh, you do, you're doing a great job out there. I wasn't planning to talk about this, but I actually love this. So yeah, yeah. join the Discord, contact Dom. He's one of the admins uh, on the HRCC, and uh, this is definitely a thing you can do. How, what would you say, the the predominance of how you help people out are when they contact you so like like the most like what i help them most with yeah yeah like yeah. what what, what yeah. would people call contact you about the most a lot of them is setting up bow things <laughs> or uh, programming <laughs> sure. radios yeah which that that can take a while because each radio is is different which knowledge and understanding tying yep. that back in here yeah um another Oh geez, there's a understanding the books and just all the tech in general and just the questions of the licenses, kind of just <laughs> understanding how what they mean and deciphering some of like the uh, FCC speak in them about like symbol rate and blah 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 and because there you go. Uh, he's he's looking thinking. at the chat. He's reading yeah. the chat. <laughs> Get all my equipment. Uh, I'm trying to think of any so. I don't think of an email I can give out I, I, here. I assume it's like I need. What is it? What is the sign? Um, I'm not homeless. Need help with DMR? The, yeah. The, the cardboard uh, sign. I'm sure you get a lot of DMR people with, with asking you questions. <laughs> oh my gosh! I tried. Uh, I think Brad's actually watching right now. One of my uh, clients on here. Programming as any tone has taken a, a few sessions now. <laughs> uh, just because. 
Any Tone's a great radio. It's oh, a fun radio to program. AD6DM, I think, just nailed it. Dom is the HRCC Geek Squad. <laughs> You know, I, I've been think, looking for a name for a while here, and I think I might go to, down that rabbit hole here. I know, but I don't want to copy Best Buy. It's got to be something yeah, better than that. Best Buy has such a bad reputation for not being good IT. So I, I don't I, even I would, get me started. Yeah, I don't. That. I don't want to go down that road. As somebody who who plays in that game, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> um, let's go back I, to the slides. But yeah, yeah, keep going. Keep go ahead. You have, finish your thought. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess for an email, if you, if you can't join the Discord or anything, uh, D Horde or D H O R D at H C A R E S dot net. If you uh, type that in the chat, go, go ahead and drop uh, it in the chat. Your email. I can't. All right, no, I'm actually not signed in right now. Oh, that's fine. Um, or oh, else I would. Okay. So on. Okay. Please join the Discord. Please contact yeah, Dom directly. But if you can't, you can email me, and and I'll. You you I'll do the I'll do the introductions. We'll do the introductions like that. How's that sound? But now I'm just gonna get like a thousand in mail or inbox messages. Can I stall uninstall McAfee off your 7300? I wish I could. I'm still trying to get it off my my guy. Yeah, Dom, can you uh, can you please help me install Linux correctly? <laughs> I, I'm still trying oh, what, to get that. What's, uh, off. what's the Linux that everybody brings up? The the super Linux nerds that we always joke about. You gotta run. Uh, oh. Or an arch. Uh, arch. Arch. Is it arch? No, that's okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, moment of clicks. Uh, whole tuner analogy that oh, <laughs> probably 10 uh, minutes ago now. You're good on, are you good on Cura Z? Oh, we don't have oh. your call sign up right now. There's reasons yeah. for that, guys. Uh, there's a reason why I don't have his call sign up. Uh, again, Discord is the way to contact him. Let's. Gen 2. Don got it. It's Gen 2. Let, oh. will, you, will you install Gen 2 for me, Dom? <laughs> No. Heck no. <laughs> totally. Cam and, and Dodd got it immediately. Good job. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, Dan Miller, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. That was really fast with the alert box, too. Faster than I expected. Um, okay. Very good. Uh, okay. So, next slide. Are we moving on? Yeah. Pretty right. good. Oh, this is me now. So this is where I kick in. This is when my di the dark side of all this comes together. But you will fail on the way. Your 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 road to understanding will be plagued with failure. And you shouldn't failure is probably a bad word. It has a bad connotation when it comes to this stuff. Embracing failure. On the road to understanding, you have to make mistakes. You have to. L literally, again, for things we already covered. We're not robots. You can't just shove information into your brain and assume that you will assimilate it and have understanding of how things work. It just won't do that. No failure, you cannot progress. If there is no failure or, and, and I want to be really clear, failure doesn't mean blowing something up, like blowing up a, a, you know, a capacitor or whatever. It means like, hey, I didn't get my radio to, to key up on FT8. I, I couldn't connect my radio to my computer. I, I didn't have I, it showed up in the device manager, but I used chirp and it didn't do anything. What am I doing wrong? Like that's a failure case, right? That's a that's a non that's not the that's not the case you want to be in, right? You want the case where it's connected and I can program it, right? So you have to fail along the way. In fact, I would argue that uh, a lot of what I do is failing constantly until I find the solution. What is the Edison quote? I don't remember the Edison quote, but. Um, you're, you're failing all the time. We found a new way to, to not to do it wrong kind of thing. I look at complex things as puzzles. The way you, a lot of people look at Rubik's Cubes and all that, I look at them as just, it's a puzzle. But it's a, it's a physical puzzle. It's a, it's a logistics thing that is a part of our lives. It's important in our lives. It's a puzzle. It, 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 it's mechanical. I know I can understand it. Or electrical. I know I can understand it if I take the time. Plumbing. Cars, electronics, computers, they're all just important for us puzzles that, that are very important for our day-to-day -day lives. Maybe that's why people are so scared of failing. I think because these cars and our, and our water heaters are so intrinsically connected to our lives that we're worried about failing with them. But if you change your worldview to see failure as part of the process, then it's it's not that big a deal. And, and case in point, and this is like, how many board games do you have? How many 
puzzles you know the little ones with like the horseshoes with the with the ring in the middle and you you got to twist it and do the thing and then the ring comes out well that's a lot of fun and you waste a lot of time doing it but now you do, do you know how a water heater works can you replace a water heater that's just another puzzle it's it, it takes gas in and flame and water and makes it hot right it's it is a form of a puzzle puzzle might be the wrong word if you start seeing non-working things as being in the failure state already you have a goal in mind i want my radio to communicate on ft8 it's in a failure state until it's communicating in ft8 so everything that you're doing at that point is just getting closer to your success point and that's where you want to be so failure is 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 universal at that point it's already broken it can't get much worse how do we fix things well we exchange time money and focus mental focus to learn something to reach the working state at least that's my argument and i think it's literally in that order money focus uh, sorry time <laughs> money and focus because you got to spend time to understand if you can even fix the dang thing then money occasionally or you decide oh, i'll just replace money with with focus and try and suss it out and more time i'll, I'll throw to you don what do you, uh, you you're kind of seeing these for the first time because i appended these to the end of your slides what do you think I was going to make a, another point, kind of like about the water heater. And I think uh, James, I can't read his call because my screen's blurry. Yeah. Um, but like, it's just like a puzzle. I'm going to add on to that too. It's, it's a very simple machine that works together in a very complicated way or a very specific intrinsic way, I guess. So sure. like, so like it ha if you really dig down into it, like you have the, like it heats up the water we have all these things that have to happen beforehand and all the things that sense everything, but that's where the understanding comes in too. Right. And, and you've got safety issues. That's, that brings back that anode idea that we, we talked about earlier yeah. is there's, there's safety involved with this. So, I mean, how does this relate to radio? Well, again, let, let's say you, uh, you, you, you go online and you look up a dipole antenna to keep it antenna based. Cause I think that's a really good point. And a lot of people start with antennas. You bring up a dipole calculator and you say, I want to talk on 14.25 megahertz, right? Little on the lower side of single sideband. And the, and the instruction says, okay, well, you're going to cut. This is the length. This is the length you want. Go ahead and cut that and then string it up. And then you inevitably string it up and you realize after this back and forth game, it's too short. The antenna is too short. Well, what are you going to do at that point? Are you going to lash on a length of wire with a, with a wire nut? Maybe. And I've done it uh, in some cases, in some desperate cases. But is that the cleanest solution? No, that's not the cleanest solution at all. So you end up saying, well, if I'm ever building a dipole again, I know that I'm going to make all these elements longer. I'm going to make them much longer than, than, um, than, than I did in the past because I learned, hey, I failed with the first dipole, and now I know, blah. Uh, what's a case in point for the Baofeng? Boy, here's one. Uh, don't use any cable that says Baofeng on it to program your Baofeng. There it is. How many, how many people failed through that? I did. I literally bought two or three cables before I found the FTDI chips. And then I was like, oh, I'm never going any other direction. I'm always going to use FTDI chips. I'm never going to mess around with any of this other stuff if we're talking about programming a Baofeng. Well, how did I how did I come to that uh, realization? I I literally took these stupid stock Baofeng USB cables, tried to program my radio, had to find cracked USB drivers, then all of a sudden those cracked USB drivers are screwing with other USB devices that I had in my computer, and I was like, well, what's what's going on here? Is it that the uh, the chip that they're using is counterfeit, maybe. Is it that they just really don't care and they'd rather you just use a custom software because the chip they're using is much cheaper than the licensed and certified FTDI chip? Probably. That, that's really what's happening is FTDI is actually like a company. They want you to buy their chips and, and China don't want to buy their, their chips. So. All right, but the cost, the cost of failure is so high start seeing the world for what it is what is the world we buy things those things are a culmination of resources time and knowledge like what we've all put together knowledge should be replaced with understanding actually with an appreciable amount of pro uh, profit baked in so everyone along the chain gets paid every failure right 
or, or even in failure, the money that you saved in cutting out the middleman is still cheaper than buying something off of the shelf. And what do I mean by that? So electric components, right? The, the material that goes into that component, there are people that get paid for that. Those components get put into a, a device. People get paid to put it in the device. But even before it gets there, someone had to de de design that device. They got paid for it. Just keep going down the rabbit hole of people getting paid to do the work that they're doing and rightfully so they should because sometimes people just don't have the time or energy to deal with it but if you put yourself in the middle and say how many links in the chain can i just just knock off the top and you say well i could get these components and i could fix this power supply which is an example um th this is the prime example you, you may not be able to see it but just above where those probes are there's a empty hole Literally, that empty hole used to have a really big capacitor in it, and it just completely blew itself up on my workbench. It literally blew itself up. So then my solution was, well, I could buy more of those capacitors and just replace them myself, or I could throw the whole thing in the trash and buy a new one. So what's, what's the most logical argument? Buy more capacitors. But the capacitors are, are cents on the dollar, so I ended up buying like 12 of them. So now I have backup in case it breaks again and I soldered it in and and now it's working there you can see so anyway that's that's the example of damn the cost we're, we're doing it anyway you'll save so much you can buy new tools and components just do the math don't tell your significant others that you're you're I'm gonna do this to save money honey I'm gonna I'm doing this all oh my wife is literally in the chat oh shoot I see her comments literally I have failed on so many problems around the house and still had money left over to buy some new whiz bang tool think of the same thing with ham radio or whatever you can do this on your own you don't have to buy an off-the-shelf commercial dipole or end fed and you'll save a lot of money and what can you do with that money you could buy a multimeter or a soldering station and, and we'll we'll talk about some tools here in a little bit at least i've got some links for so so how does this apply to ham radio no one was born with a radio on their head or had some kind of extra sensory thing that was a part of their body so every step on your journey is a new puzzle if we if we bring back the puzzle idea programming your ht by hand or computer installing a mobile radio how many of you have actually ran wires through a car before probably not many not most unless you were a kid in the 90s like me and or early 2000s and wanted a subwoofer and put your uh, rockford fosgate uh, subwoofer tube in the back of your uh, honda civic putting up an antenna just talking on the thing how many people don't pick up the radio and talk because of mic fright that's a failure state right you, you, the, the state you want to be in is is confidence talking on the radio well until you do that you're in a failure state right so think about that is it just just another puzzle how can i get out of <laughs> uber geek 318 with the super chat thank you very much drink every time josh says appreciable i i specifically bolded it just because i know people who listen to the podcast love when i say that word it's one of my favorite words as we used to today in the example of just building a dipole right it's a new problem it's a new puzzle who cares if you fail at it just cut it a little bit long and walk it in fold the legs over until your swr and your your radio reads in the spot you want it to be for the frequency that you want to transmit on you don't need an antenna analyzer necessarily but after you build four or five of these suckers you're going to get really tired of running back and forth and then the extra cost of having an antenna analyzer antenna analyzer becomes valuable or you buy a um, nano vna and just go that route right digital modes dom uh so digital modes do you get a lot of contacts on digital modes when people want help um not yet a little bit a little bit little um bit. i've helped a few people set up like wsjtx and um thankfully not fl digi hate setting that up Le leia's doing something in the background right now she's she's Okay, I, I'm going to switch this for a second. There's a two. What's a... I don't know how you thought this was going to work out. This is literally the whole two. And she's got all the other uh, zero, zero, and K. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, there's no room behind me. It's all green screen. Oh, my God. Okay, well, this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Th 
Thank you so much for that. That's oh, there's a K. We gotta shove a K in here too. Um, okay. Well, let... <laughs> uh, thank you so so much. Here, okay, I'll take it. I'll take the K. I have a K now. Here we go. All right. So sorry, Dom. I missed most of that. What were you saying? Very good. Uh, so like setting up digital modes, like a few people ha help set up like uh, WSGTX. Um, thankfully, not a whole lot on FL Digi yet. <laughs> hate setting or, that up uh, so much. Uh, what's what's the other one that we really hate? Oh gosh, PC Ale, PC Ale. Oh, I've not set that up yet myself, and I'm kind of glad. Mm -hmm. And you know, actually tying this back into uh, getting your hands dirty with it, WinLink setting up myself really helped setting it up on another computer because i was so lost setting it up for the first time yeah um and and, and it's a completely different setup whether you're using packet like if you do packet that's a completely different setup than um what's the one everybody's using now vara uh, vara is a completely different setup from um any of the other ones that are yep. that's a different setup too I, I'm yeah. literally the the fan is blowing all the balloons at me and knocking the light out of it's screwing up the light. Anyway, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I can't think of too much more for digital modes. Um, I've had a few questions. On, like, FT8 seems like a lot of people get the idea of it, but when it comes down to like understanding the like what each of the lines means, like CQ or like how it goes through it. Yes. That kind of seems where it's holding people up a little bit more. Yeah. The actual operation of it. I mean, that's a yeah. real thing too. We, we were talking, I was specifically talking more hands-on because a lot of my understanding, if you will, is my having literally go built antennas, literally do all this other stuff. But a lot of it's just operating the radio, right? Yeah. And the comfort of that. That's a, again, that's a failure state. You want to be at this point, but you're down here at the, at the failure state point. And there, in WSJTX, there's actually a couple of hurdles that you have to get through to, to actually get to that point where you've, you know, can actually you just make sit it down work. and do it. Yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, a couple more things, digital modes I mentioned. Building your first kit radio. That's a whole, that's a whole jam. Um, I do have a couple of things over here. We're running out of time though, quickly. So I want to I want to hit some of them, and then we can we can move on. And then lastly, Morse code. I mean, Morse, Morse code is literally like the epitome of a. Everybody, I think deep down, even people who who say I'll never learn Morse code, Morse code, they always have wanted to learn it. They do want to learn it. It's it's another kind of failure state thing. You can get to the point that you can understand five words a minute, and then you get to ten, and then you get to fifteen. It's just another puzzle, right? As you go, ooh, that's interesting. I can get the green screen to turn on. That's okay, good. The gold balloons do nothing for uh, green screens. So yeah, Leia, uh, thank you so much. I don't know how you did what you did. That definitely was not in the house when I started the live stream. So. Uh, so yeah, th that was uh, the slides, Dom. That was uh, that was great. Do you have any other um, mentions, comments you want to do? I'm gonna bring up some uh, websites here. Oh my goodness. So yeah, the Go only ahead. thing is just like a uh, 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 one or two personal things about like failing on the way because like I'm not immune to that. Uh, like I've been trying to get OP25 working on a Raspberry Pi for weeks now, and just the hurdles trying to jump through and understand all the ins and outs of trying to get it to work and it not working and why it doesn't work because i want to get to the point where it just starts and goes i'm so not there yet they brought me a cake nice. so now i have a cake too i'll put this right here thank you leah appreciate that that's very funny um <laughs> let, I, I do have some websites that i actually did want to go in through and i i didn't expect to get cake or balloons so um so for people that are interested in this, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up for a second. <laughs> this isn't gonna work because these balloons. <laughs> it's totally killing the website. Oh man. Um, I I did. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. Hold on. Okay, sorry, zero. You gotta go. Okay, there we go. All right, so I added a, a learn by doing. I added a couple items in there that, that I would have bought, like, if I were to kind of start doing stuff again, uh, like starting all over again. Nano VNA needs to be added to this, too, for antenna analyzers. So th that would be my, my little kit. I would have a, a good multimeter. What's a good multimeter? Well, you can definitely get started with one of these. 
Seven dollars. Harbor Freight multimeter is is a fine way to go. Let me fix my green screen again. That did it. Oh well, whatever. Things are screwed up here, guys. I apologize. Uh, Seven dollars gets you started. You can totally work with that. That's fine. A couple of projects. Hackaday has a couple of links for projects at Ham Radio, things that you can go practice failing on, right? These are all fun things that you can learn by doing. So, simple digital mode transmitter, simple AX25 TNC, so you can use that for APRS. Uh, I'll post the links in the description too. The ARRL has, where is it? Right here. The ARRL has an article section on projects for ham radio operators. And the one I pulled up, which I thought was pretty cool, again, I'll post links. Uh, let's see, right there is a computer controlled CW encoder. So you just plug a computer into your radio and start typing CW and it'll key it out for you. Uh, for some just fun, quirky stuff, like not necessarily ham related, Adafruit or Adafruit is always cool. Uh, I, I think they make a lot of cool stuff. So check that out if you're interested in it. And what is the other things? Yeah, real quick, I'll bring Dom back in for this. I think I gotta fight my way through some balloons to get over the overhead camera, but um, a couple of books I wanna mention before we, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, a couple of books. The Practical Antenna, oh, there's a balloon in the, <laughs> in the shot. The Practical Antennas Handbook from the ARRL is, is really good if you're interested in antennas. I've dog-eared like many a pages on, on all kinds of practical antennas that you can use and kind of theory behind a lot of them. So that is a multi-fan dipole, for instance. You could call that a maypole, kind of by its al uh, alignment. Uh, Ward Silver puts out Ham Radio for Dummies. Ward's, Ward Silver is the editor of the uh, Amateur Radio Relay League Handbook, which we'll talk about in a second. But in this, if you're if you're starting out, if you're like super super fresh into ham radio, Ward Silver's book is is really helpful. A couple of things of note: uh, make sure you go to the videos, podcast, and webinar section, and go to YouTube.com. YouTube.com is is what it's recommending. I would recommend that. Um, finding out where to listen or how to use receiving signals. I started out as a shortwave, shortwave listening person. I didn't have CB. I just listened to radio. So that's that's kind of what I did. Great book for that. Explaining how that all works for those that are new. And then there's a whole section on explaining different antenna or what you would likely use for different antenna components and whatnot. And then, of course, lastly, I'll, I'll make this quick because we're we're pretty much out of time. Uh, if you really want to understand some stuff, the ARRL handbook, and now my green screen is all screwed up. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Never. Go. There we go. <laughs> Got it. The, the ARRL handbook, still one of the best things you can buy if you're interested in ham radio is get one of these, particularly if you want to go a little bit deeper into the understanding, going back to what Dom and I were talking about. You, you took your license test, you passed, and you want to know what is behind the questions that you answered. It's it's in this book, and there is a ton of like really good information here. I have multiple versions of this. You don't need a new one necessarily. You can get one that's a couple of years old, and you'll be okay. You can find them cheap too. So, yeah. All right, Dom. Man, I didn't expect that there at the end. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Thanks for Doing hanging good. through that. <laughs> All good. So, um, you wanna you wanna throw a, a button on it? Any last words or comments before I, I go uh, and close things out? Uh, not that I can think of. Um, I, if I can, I can, if I can make a plug for our local ham fest here. Oh yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. If yeah, you wanna drop the, the link, can you can you drop the link in the uh, in the uh, Zoom and I'll post it? Uh yeah, shoot. Hang on. It should be at some point posted. <laughs> I'm trying to type it out here. I kind of just went directly into the top of the cake like a monster. She gave me a whole cake. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with a whole cake. I hope that's not a broken link. It should be well without HTTP. But yeah, uh, Hamfest. If anyone's near Ohio, uh, the Finley Hamfest is going to be September 12th, and it's going to be definitely in person and probably one of the bigger ones in the area and we're kind of proud of being able to say that i, I like that you said i like that you said it's definitely going to be in person <laughs> most definitely we, yeah 
So here it is, the uh, Finley Radio Club. Again, I'll, I'll append all the, the links in the description because we kind of added these late, late in the game. Uh, what are the dates that this is? Oh, there you go. July 17th. Wait, no, that's no. not it. Uh, that's September not right. 12th. Uh, what's it, September 12th? September 12th. Okay, very uh, good. Six, or is it 6 a.m.? 7 a.m.? So 6, eight, sorry, eight, doors open at 8 and it's till 1 o'clock. Oh, I and had the wrong website. That's my my bad. Hold on, let me go back for a second. So there you go. Right. Yeah. The Hamfest uh, 2021 is there's fire. Oh, hold on, hold that up in a second. Hold on. Uh, yeah. There's a phone number there. It is September 12th in the Finley area. Did you, did you pronounce it Finley? Is that what you guys say? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and hold that flyer up. Oh, it's oh wow, that's <laughs> terrific. Hold on, hold on. That's my uh, bad. I, I, oh, I usually oh, leave the Zoom guest on um, on green screen yeah. just because I can. Hold on. No, you're good. You're good. Well, okay, hold on. we got you're it. Good. Go ahead. Okay. Now you're good. That's <laughs> that was okay, me. I'm doing that. Room. Yeah. Look Babe, at that. Could you please uh, uh, single uh, SSTV that to me, please? Over the, yes, uh, I can. Yes, thank you. Very good. I can get on, what is it, 14, uh, 212 or something? Uh, 14... Where is single? 230. 230. 14, 230. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get this SSTV over there for uh, yeah, kicks please, and giggles. Please kick that over on the SSTV. That's right. Or, or do a, uh, do the QR code thing. That's that's the next oh. the next game I want to do is is do all my SSTVs with QR codes in them. Yes. Because I did the giveaway <laughs> with the QR code, and that was awesome. That worked out great. You got to do that, but it only redirects to a uh, Rick Astley's never going to give you up. So that's... God, Dom, you already yeah. I, I got to get people used to the concept before I just start Rick rolling them, right? <laughs> I can't do that right out of the shoot. That's too much. That's too. Uh, but then they won't trust me again. You got to get them all comfortable, and then you hit them with the Rick roll. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, damn it. Well, so everybody watching, you'll you'll know what the what one of the secrets is for the uh, the next live stream giveaway over single side man. If you get Rick rolled, that was not the the <laughs> the one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Marvin uh, Van Wert, Ohio Ham Fest is tomorrow as well. Oh, uh, wow. And for those that know where Van Wert is... Um, I do not. <laughs> yeah. If anyone's in the area, it's on a little bit east of the Indiana border. Okay. Right on. All right. Well, um, so uh, I think we, we let the cat out of the bag. I didn't necessarily expect that, but if you are... Um, if you are interested in personal assistance with ham radio, Dom is, is willing... Um, has already been doing it for a while now, so contact him directly. He's he's on he's one of the HRCC admins, so make sure you just just contact him and, and work something out with him. And I think he already said what your what your rates are. Which um, I got to talk to you about that after the show. Uh, you are far too cheap for what you're doing. I'll just you say that right. Uh, who who are you competing against? Who who is competing in this space? Uh, cheap OMS. Hmm. Okay, I got it. All right, uh, Dom, I'm gonna let you go here on the live stream, but hang oh on the Zoom. God. What did it say? Twenty dollars super chat if Zo if Josh vomits on the live stream. I'm not gonna vo a bottle of champagne. Come on. You just gotta chug it, and then that's how you do it. I could chug a bottle of champagne. Uh, you know what? I'm not gonna say any of this on the live stream. We're just gonna wrap it up. Uh, I I'll I'll talk to you in a second, Dom. I'm gonna close things out. Yeah. All right. We ran a little bit long, but hey, everybody, thank you so much for watching. We're going to go to the uh, Discord after chat. Join us on the Discord. We talk ham radio, answer your questions. Uh, we'll have a little 200,000 talk. We'll talk about the Cuban jamming. Uh, what else? There is going to be a uh, ham radio 2.0 live stream sometime later tonight. They've got Mike K at MRD in the house because uh, they're actually like in the same physical location which is fun so we get to watch them hang out and talk uh, but we will be on the after chat so you can join us over there and we'll probably watch the video i will be on twitch i'll be streaming to twitch if you're if you're interested in following me there uh the discord after chat is also live streamed to twitch so i hope you do join us all right let me uh let me say a big thank you that's the wrong one there it is thank you to the patrons thank you so much for um for for supporting really seriously like uh 200,000 through your support allowing me to buy a lot of this crazy stuff obviously the equipment that I'm streaming on is in part funded by my patrons I really do appreciate it 
it helps soften the blow of our, our monthly fees that we have to do now that we do the podcast and all the other stuff. So it means a lot. It, it really does. And I, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you all. And all the congrats on the 200K. Um, that is M-O-J-E-O. Pro tip for the day, make sure you connect the coax. Yes. And uh, you, you could you could have knowledge of that. But until you do it, do you have understanding? Right? That would be the, the comment. I... Uh, I definitely have done that before where I was doing an activation and I didn't remember to connect the coax. That only happens like a couple of times and then you learn really quickly. If you're using a radio where that could be really detrimental to it, then that that's obviously a really bad thing. Most QRP radios are a little bit more sensitive. So there's my comments on that. We will have a patron picks vote go out pretty soon here for all the patrons this is something insider stuff just to remind the patrons the vote will go out here soon so you'll be able to vote on the first topic of next month august the first week in august first week of every month i always let the patrons pick the topic and that vote goes out usually towards the latter half of the month that we're in so that's going to go out soon and newsletters obviously coming soon newsletter is a part of the patron system patron perks along with stickers and qsl cards so just want to say a big thank you again 200k was a little wild when that watching that happen was like kind of a kind of a surreal moment kind of weird that a ham radio channel gets 200k to me that that seems a little wild but uh hey i appreciate all of you i really do it means the world to me that you you watch this it really does i i, I love looking at the comments hearing from you all and talking to you the best we can you know like discord join us over there and we'll try to answer your questions if you have anything but um i'm gonna head out i'm gonna go talk to dom for a little bit here we're gonna do a little i guess uh after party before <laughs> joining discord i guess i don't know anyway let me play you all some memes please enjoy talk to you later see ya all right mike's still hot so let's play him out and then i'll talk to you in a second <laughs> Dom, do you want to say anything? Because everybody's looking at memes and your mic's still hot, so you can say something if you want to. Gee, I don't know what else to say here. Um, you did a good job, man. That was great. I'm going to polish off this champagne bottle. Or Prosecco. I'm a fan of... Uh, oh, shoot. I can't think of the champagne now. Don't say uh, Barefoot or Andre. No, 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 no. Is it uh, Vouv Clicquot? No. <laughs> That's good stuff. It's gonna, I gotta find it now. It's just gonna bother me. It's not Dom here. No, nah, Dom's kind of overrated. One, but... Dom's kind of overrated. I am. Uh, Martini and Rossi. No. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, so you like the sweet stuff? Yeah. Oh, Fresh I only and, drink I mean, brute. I only drink I mean, brute. I, d I don't hate like uh, dry stuff. I like dry whites, and I like whites a lot. I'm not a fan of reds, but like. I'm not picky for champagne. I like them a little bit sweeter. I really like ice wine, though. Oh man, that's a that was a we brought that up at the podcast. Oh, ice wine. Ice wine, yeah. That's What's German. That a, a, German uh, ice wine. Ice wine is a German. Yeah, not not a not for everybody. It's not carbonated most of the time either, right? Yeah, no. There's a place up in uh, Putin Bay, Ohio, where. Uh, Sandusky or something around here that makes ice wine at uh, Wow. Oh, that makes sense wine. in Ohio. Dude, you, that would work because it's cold enough. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Like, it pours like syrup. Yeah. Oh. Do you like port? I do like port. That's okay. one of the few reds I like. I like Oh, port. you like the sweet stuff. Okay, I got it. All right. Anyway. I like sweet reds. So that was, but... that was a bit of our after party. Guys, if you'd like to <laughs> continue this conversation, join us over on YouTube or Discord. Jeez. I'm already on YouTube. I don't know what I'm talking about. Join us on Discord. I'll be live streaming on stream. Or on... Man, 